Hi, it's Paul Bolger here again. Uh, this is the third vlog, vlog number three, and it's going to be basically how I put together the pages. I'm not going to do a Photoshop lesson here, or I don't. I wouldn't know enough to do that anyway. I just use a very basic brush and a very very basic approach to Photoshop. But um, I just wanted to give some insight into some of the process that I use, or maybe the thought process, and I can talk about some of the drawing as I do it. So what you're looking at there is basically how a page is set up. Um, there's a rough, obviously, underneath. I start to draw in on top like you would as if you're doing it in ink, but I black in everything first. I find the shapes on top of the rough, and I try to find the light, and then I try to keep the dynamics. I'm constantly moving back and forth between the layers. As if it's, imagine it like a sheet of tracing paper or a sheet of clear plastic. And I'm trying to always find the details and sections that are of interest. And it's interesting, the great thing about Photoshop is you can move it around and you can go really close if the image is big enough, uh, physically big enough, that when you zoom in it doesn't go blurry or anything. But I sometimes will draw two or three different versions of the finished line. Um, before I'm happy. Like here, for example, I'm just trying to figure out um, the shapes. And it's a bit like as if you imagine you're using stencils. Um, sometimes it's freehand and sometimes I draw something, then I copy it and I flip it one way, flip it the other. See, like I want to get that symmetrical. So it was easier for me just to take a copy of my existing drawing instead of trying to draw it on the other side, which didn't feel right to me. So I just copied it, I flipped it, and I pasted it in. And now I'm just quickly drawing with a black over the white, almost like negative etching or a negative scratch board to suggest there's some leather bound around the handle of the stick. And you can see as well that they're rough. The thing is kept quite rough in places like, for example, if you look underneath the stick, I haven't even bothered to clean up yet. The little, the little scribbly bits, you know, that are sticking out. Same there when I'm drawing the tree. Everything is just thrown in real quick. I'm just trying to find shapes, I'm just trying to find the feeling. The last thing I want is to make it look stiff, and it's hard to do that, especially with this digital thing, because you can just keep going and going and going. So I try to keep the brush simple, I use the most basic one I can find, black and white, um, and I'm just throwing it down as if I had a real brush in my hand and real ink. Uh, you know, I put my white, I'm putting black on it. Now when I put white on it again, uh, I kind of, in my head, I'm thinking like, oh, hang on, this is white acrylic paint or, or Tipex or white out or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's constantly working back and forth between the light and the dark. You can see I'm putting the white in there to suggest the cracks in the tree that might pick up uh, and the bark might pick up some light. It's very loose. It's very expressive. I'm not trying to be photographic. In fact, I don't want to be. Um, I just want to kind of capture a feeling. Yeah, you know, so I'm continuing with the white and the black. And it's something that I discovered when I was drawing the pages first. I was trying to draw it by imagining where the white would be, and it, it was just too much. So I just went in like this, you see, adding the white. I'm, I'm able to literally paint over, digitally paint over the parts I don't want to keep anymore. If this was drawn on board, I mean, if you saw this as, a, as an original piece of comic art on a piece of cardboard with ink, um, you would see all this, you know, you would see all my corrections and then when it's photographed and prepared for print those um, Scratches and bits of white paint and all the blue pencil and the different colors that the uh, photograph would pick up they're wiped out So digitally I'm kind of doing all that as I go like you see I'm drawing his forehead. I'm putting in the light going through the hair I'm putting white on black so it's a it's it's a I really enjoy it. I have to say it's quite interesting. It's different um, I originally wanted to do the comic on paper with, with Chinese brushes and, and ink, but I wouldn't have had the flexibility I have digitally. Um, you can see his face is not quite finished. If you look at his eyes, they're quite, you know, rough. It's just thrown in there. His hand, I think, is a bit odd looking. Maybe it looks like his wrist is broke. So these are things that when I'm drawing, like the eyes or I'm drawing the hair, I'm kind of glancing around the page as I draw and I'm noticing little things I want to fix. You know, so I'm just using the white paint, if you want to call it that, to correct the very loose brush strokes that I feel could do a little bit of refining. It's a funny mix, you know, like it, it is really a, a compromise between being tight and being loose and 
I didn't want to go so graphic that I would use all these hard shapes all the time or straight lines. I kind of wanted to feel slightly organic. See, I'm just constantly refining all the time. And you can see there, there's an underlying sketch on different layers. And you could end up, if you look on the right of uh, the drawing there, you'll see all the little boxes that are showing the different layers that I'm using. Um, we're on page 38. You see number 38. All those different little folders are a different page in this scene. This is the scene where he's going to go and uh, face the big hound. So basically, to make my life easy, I just create one big PSD file in Photoshop, which is like a basically a canvas to work on. And I create then different groups of drawings. Like So for example, you know, page 38 uh, has its rough drawing. You can see it down there on the bottom, just above 37. And uh, I keep the rough barely visible underneath, sometimes not when I'm drawing it in. And then I just kind of, I literally, I don't trace, but I, I, I kind of have my guide. Another way to think of it is like a light box, as if you're drawing on, on, on a light box. And you can see I'm finishing this guy up here. This is Yonku Cullen. He's about 13 in this. And I'm using the white to kind of refine. Great thing as well with Photoshop, what I like is you could just zoom in. Like I said that earlier. Now, if you're doing it on paper, you could use a magnifying glass, I suppose, um, if you wanted to get in. The danger with that is, of course, you can have very fine lines which won't show up when you pull back and you see it at proper size. Some of the these dots I'm doing as shapes and folds in the material, that, that's a leather glove that he's wearing. My idea with those things, I made those up. They're, I call them the hurling glove. And basically it's something that they would have used to protect their sword arm or their um, active arm in sport or in war. So they wear it on their right sleeve or if they're left hand, I guess they'd have on the left hand, but the idea being that it's kind of padded, sort of protects them. Uh, I don't want to do Celtic interlacing, for example. I don't want to do that kind of later period, what people think of as uh, Celtic. I don't want to do that. So I'm dealing with more abstract or sort of looser versions of it. Um, the art style that I'm focused on for this is what they call Latin Celtic art, which is an earlier period than the Book of Kells. There's no interlacing, uh, the knot work, nothing like that. Um, that actually comes from North Africa. I think the Coptic Christians um, started to do that. And then uh, there may be a, a Scandinavian influence as well, or maybe it's a bit of both going each way, you know, stuff coming from the south, stuff coming from the north. I mean, I saw um, Islamic texts in a museum and they were almost exactly the same as the Book of Kells. The borders were absolutely similar. Um, so I guess we could call the interlacing stuff of the Book of Kells Irish and later Irish. The Latin is earlier. It's influenced more by uh, indigenous designs and stuff from Middle Europe um, and Southern Europe, which I think is where classically Celtic people were supposed to come from. Um, that's only a small detail. But anyway, I, I'm drawing here. You see how loose and quick I, I do the hair? I'm trying to keep it moving because sometimes with me I have my own obviously my own taste and when I look at some comics I find them stiff overposed overstaged um, they're very dynamic they can have amazing angles and the anatomy drawing is astounding I can't do it myself or I can approximate it but I'm going more I suppose like the way you might draw a storyboard or you're going for something that's more expressive to capture a feeling I'm not really interested in impressing everybody how well I can draw a foot coming at the camera or a fist or a whatever. I'm trying to do it the best I can, but it's it's not like I'm trying to, to, to diminish that. But it's important to keep the overall in mind and not get hung up on a single page or a single panel. I mean, this is drawn in real time. You're looking at me when I... What you see here is as I drew it, I haven't sped this up. It's not slowed down. Um... It's about the speed I would draw it. And you can see again, I'm using the white and the black, uh, working one into the other. Um, I'm very conscious of overshading, so I just put in a couple of extra marks to hint at um, the muscles and the shapes of the knuckles. I mean, there's a few elements in this. I mean, you're seeing this warts and all, and I don't mind showing it. You know, uh, it'll eventually... 
end up the way I want it to be. But at this point, it's, it's quite early in the sketch. So I go through this process, constantly tweaking, constantly pulling and pushing. And if I had done it on paper with paint and ink, I think um, it would have taken me longer. Um, I guess I could argue that it could have been done quicker, but it would have been so loose and so expressive that maybe some of the expressions or the actions might be hard to read. Um, and maybe it's not quite suited to this kind of project. It's a, it's a different style. Um, this has to be a little bit tight, a little bit clear. I mean, you can see there, see the panels underneath the kids' legs, uh, left and right of them there. Like, see, they're just black shapes. Now there's the rough coming through. So what I will do is I will use the rough drawing underneath, which was done digitally as well, uh, to go in and find the details. But I threw in the blacks first, just to see um, how that all comes together. Okay, I'm going to shut up. That's a lot to take in. It's quite a long video already. So I'm going to speed up the next bit. And okay, I'll see you in the next video. All the best. Thanks. Bye-bye. Fair, however, more to you when you're my he and more of the hotel is coming to the hill.